Welcome everyone to Talk Story with John Waihei. Today we have an exciting guest. Um, he is, his name is uh, Tim Vanderveer. He is the new chairman of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. And um, for many, many people who spend their lives in the Democratic Party, your election was a uh, surprise, new guard, <laughs> right? And so, you know, I think uh, for me, as, uh, you know, as an old Democrat, um, it's uh, very interesting and it's also kind of heartwarming to see the transition, hopefully to some new leadership and new, de uh, new generation. So, Tim is here today with us to tell us a little bit about uh, where the Democratic Party is now, what's going to happen in the future, and also about yourself. So, you were elected at the recent uh, Democratic Convention, and Correct. that was uh, last month, I guess. Correct, end, end of May. May. Yep. End, end of May. Did you ever think, because this has been on my mind, prior to that election, that you would be the leader of the Democrat, uh, Democratic Party in Hawaii? Uh, I did, actually. You uh, did? I did. Oh, wow. um, okay. I knew it was a long shot. Yeah. Not to say I didn't didn't think it was a long shot, but I ran to win. I ran my campaign to win. To win uh, to, for the, um, as the party chair. As the party chair, that's correct. But let's say in January, did you have any idea before the precinct election? I did not. No, right? I did not. So this is where you'd life. So tell us a little bit about <laughs> who you are. Then uh, in, Say January... 2016. Who were you and how did you get there? Well, sure. I, I will say I, I didn't ever have any designs on the chairmanship uh, in particular, to chair the party in particular, but I did want to increase my involvement in the party. So I'm a lifelong Democrat, uh, right. born and raised in Texas. Uh, okay. My mom. A Texas Democrat. A Texas that's Democrat, a, that's which is very so, rare yeah. these days. Didn't used yeah, to be. kind of be a little bit of an, what do you call it, an anachronism or something. Anomaly, like I guess, yeah. Anomaly. Yeah. Um, uh, my mom grew up here part-time, so I heard a lot about Hawaii growing up. My grandparents lived here before statehood and then shortly after statehood All right. when my grandfather retired out of the Navy. But um, growing up a Texas Democrat, particularly in my lifetime, was a pretty challenging thing. So when did you move to Hawaii? How old were you? Uh, about 15 years ago. Okay. Right. So were you a Texas Democrat during the years that Ann Richards was the governor of Texas? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, my first election was... Uh, uh, my first vote, I should say, was in her re-election campaign for governor. I hope you voted for her instead Ab of George Bush. You bet Bush. I did. You bet I did. But unfortunately, she lost that election. Yeah, it's so unfortunately for the country. That's right. Yeah. yeah that's well, right. you know, she was uh, she was a, a partner of mine. We were uh, in the same law firm. Wow. Together. Yeah. Wow. So you know, Texas amazing is, individual. Uh, in, yeah, she she really was. So you came to Hawaii fifty. What for? Um, to live. Uh, I'd heard a lot about it. Uh, my grandparents had both passed away. My grandmother never really stopped talking about Hawaii um, when I was a kid. She talked about it all the time and always in very loving terms. Uh, my mom didn't really remember much because she was a little kid when right. I lived here. But um, I had a friend I used to work with when I was in college and he had grown up here and was moving back um, from Austin where I went to school. And he offered me a place to stay, and I moved out. Go oh, great! And, uh, and and somewhere after January, or maybe about, you got enthusiastic about the uh, Bernie Sanders campaign, right? I did. And tell us a little bit about that. How did that come about? Well, I mean, well before January. Matter of fact, I was a, a delegate to the state convention in 2008. Okay. Um, for Barack Obama, and so. Oh, you went left twice. I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's my thing. Left hands, right? That's right. Well, I'm left-handed too, so I don't know if that has anything well, to do with it. Well, three left-handed, then yeah. Right. Um, so um, I was very active in my labor union. I was working at Turtle Bay at that time, and so was local very, five was very active in local five, and uh, went to the state convention, and then eventually was selected as uh, part of a group of shop stewards from Hawaii to go up and actually work on the Obama campaign in 2008. Oh, how exciting. So they sent groups to different swing states. We were selected to go to Wisconsin. And so at that time, that's the first time I actually heard about Senator Bernie Sanders. Um, okay. Maybe not the first time I'd heard about him, but the first time um, I really got to hear him speak. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Tom Hartman that does a radio show would have Fridays with Bernie. Oh, all right. And so um, 
knowing that that President Obama was not. So this is in Minnesota, you say? And we, uh, Wisconsin. 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 Well, yeah. Way up cold, cold places, right? But uh, yeah, we, from luckily we were there from August until the election, so we got to take off <laughs> before it really got cold. <laughs> so you went up to work for Obama, and that's where you discovered Bernie. That's correct. And I'm, you so know, I'm a little further left. Did you have a hand in organizing the Bernie Sanders campaign in Hawaii? Um, very little, actually. I'm also a part-time law student. I'll be transitioning. Actually, right, to my alma mater. That's correct. Uh, and then let's Richardson tell the school. world that Richardson School of Law is one of the finest university law schools in the nation. The William Free Richardson plug. School of Law is indeed one of the finest university law schools in the nation. Okay, so now you're here, you go to law school, Bernie comes up, you, you, you what, you, you start to get excited about it and get involved. I did. But not in the organizational plan. I mean, you weren't chairman of the no, you know, Bernie. No, you know. I just, I didn't have the time working a full-time job and going to law school part-time. What's your full-time job? Well, at the time, it was unexploded ordinance technician. See, so, see, so here's a left w guy goes left-wing politics, and what his job is is going around um, dealing with unexploded ordinances. Always been a big environmentalist, um, dating right. back to before my days at Turtle Bay and the Keep the Country Country movement. But um, when I was uh, offered an opportunity to study and to learn um, unexploded ordinance mitigation, I jumped at it because that's a a real hands-on way to uh, defend Mother Earth, if you will. So, oh, fantastic! Well, it's yeah. interesting life you 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 live. <laughs> you know, <laughs> anyway, one way to look at it. Anyway, uh, the uh, convention comes up. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the precinct elections. Mm -hmm. Bernie does very well. He wins like seventy percent of the vote of those people who participated in the Democratic precinct election. You end up at the convention. Actually, you're one of five candidates, I think. There, uh, were, there were four of us. Four, four candidates, candidates yeah. that were running for party chairman, right? Yeah. And you won. Barely. Okay. Barely. It was a plurality. So about 20, I believe, 27 votes, 24 votes, something like that. Um, really? So, well, were you, you were there for the election. Yeah, I was there. Was I was exciting, there. I, didn't, I, I, knew, I knew it was a pretty exciting election, and, yeah. I, and I, I knew it was pretty close, but I didn't realize it was... 24 votes. Yeah, very close. Huh. That should give some people some restless nights if they only campaigned a little <laughs> harder. You know, that's the problem. Well, some great that. people. I'll, I, I, I should say some wonderful people. Very good Democrats running against me, um, and some folks that I um, had the good fortune of having them reach out to me to help after the election, and, and one of whom I'm working with, and I plan on on oh, getting everyone so involved. So all of a sudden, you go. <clears throat> you're no longer just. Uh, well, not Jess, but you're no longer the Bernie supporter as such. You're the head of the party. Correct. Which means that all the people who lost, as you point out, and the entire people who might, uh, the people who voted for Hillary as well, all of you, you are now the leader of all of them. That's correct. So w w how does that, well, first of all, how does it feel and uh, what does that mean? <laughs> well, it's very humbling. First and foremost, and I'm sure you can relate to that to some extent from right. your own political experience. Um, uh, it's also a bit intimidating. Okay. I, I feel in many ways, uh, this was a, an analogy given to me, like the car that, the, the dog that finally caught up with the car. You okay. know, like, now what? Right? Now what do you do when you right. got the tire, right? Exactly. <laughs> it's moving, by the way. Exactly. And so, um, one of the, the tangible ways that it changed my focus and my direction was a trip to California I took shortly after the election. This okay. is a trip that I had planned on taking once school finished up, once my contract, my, my last job contract finished up, where I was going to go to California to work on the Bernie Sanders campaign. And as you pointed out, as soon as I was elected chair, it was the chair of the entire party. Right. And so the right. focus of that trip changed from being a trip to work for one particular campaign to more of a diplomatic uh, bridge building mission and so what I did in California was meet with both campaigns um, was to reach out to state party officials to reach out to elected officials from both campaigns and also to some of our traditional backers uh, what many would call the backbone of our party and that's working people and organized labor right, um, to, right. to make that trip I think something that, that the chair um, could be proud of and uh, that our party could be proud of as well well organized labor was also has always been traditionally a very important part of the uh, Democratic Party. And to some extent, 
organized labor may find itself, you know, after a hundred years of being in the party, more toward the right side of the party. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, and this is uh, just a normal progression as you get more successful, seem to be, you know. How do you, well, uh, you got a, your big challenge that's obvious is going to be mel melting the uh, Sanders people and the Hillary people. Um, but before we get to that, the harder question may be how you unite the factions in the party, which uh, some people, some chairmen have done successfully and others haven't. You know, I mean, you, 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 you brought in the Sanders group that came into the party, a lot of young people, yes. a lot of idealistic people, a lot of environmentalists, although the party sort of walked in that direction, a lot of the rights people, and you've got the, the labor groups and so forth. No, you've got any, have you gotten any feel for how you put these various people together? They're, you know, we'll live through the Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton campaign, but, sure. but you'll still be chairman. So how do you put all of this together? I mean, have you thought of it? Well, I think it's focusing on just that, that after the national campaign has come and gone, that we've got um, the hard work to do that involves local politics and making sure that Democrats are elected locally. And it's a big job, no doubt. And whether or not I get it right, I think will largely uh, define how successful we are as a party. But I think first and foremost, we've got to open the lines of communication. I've got to be as transparent and as fair as, right. as I can possibly be as right. chair. Um, and we've got to remind folks of our history. You know, this isn't the first time, as you know, right. that a revolution, quote unquote, has come to our islands. And, well, you and participated in two. Right. <laughs> That's right. 88 and, you know. 2008, right, and, and, and now. But, I mean, you know, our, our party has had these discussions, these de debates since its inception. Well, let me ask you a question. Sure. Really, basically, why are you a Democrat? I'm a Democrat. Mean, what's, what does it mean for you? I'm a Democrat because I believe in the fundamental role of government to help solve problems in people's lives. Okay. I'm a New Deal Democrat and have always been proud to say that because of my own experiences, my own family's experiences, I should say, and um, the way that I view the role of government, a strong social safety net, an active involvement in people's lives to, to change it for the better. Well, I tell you, we are go going to talk to you a little bit about, more about how you get the party rejuvenated how you handle the upcoming national convention. I need your help on both counts. Yeah. I'll say that much right now. <laughs> oh, boy. And, and <laughs> then, uh, you know, how you, uh, what are some of your plans? So with that, um, we're going to take a short break right now, and uh, we'll be right back. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I serve as senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on ThinkTech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our healthcare system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. Aloha. My name is Carl Campagna, and I am the host of ThinkTech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I invite you to come watch our show on thinktechhawaii.com. You can also see our shows on YouTube as well, if you can Google search those. I appreciate the time. I hope that you do join us as we learn about education, about the educational system here in Hawaii, what the challenges are, what the benefits are, and how much our kids are learning. So thank you. I hope you join us. Welcome. Talk story with John Waihe. And our guest today is the new generation head of the Hawaii Democratic Party, Mr. Tim Vanderveer. And we were just talking about um, your plans and uh, for the future of the party. Now, one of the first things you're going to have to do is lead a delegation of Hawaii uh, delegates to the National Convention, I think in Philadelphia. That's correct. At the end of July sometime. So, so tell us, uh, what do you expect that to be like? I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. uh, you I know, hope so. You, I'm a delegate. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I don't want to go there and not have fun. <laughs> right. You know, I, which, by the way, it's one of my criticisms, one of my criticisms of the new Democrats. 
Okay. And maybe you can change this. Okay. So I'll put this on the table. Okay. Early, okay. Right? Let's hear it. And that is that they have this tendency, and I was just like that when we broke into the party. But they, they have this tendency to be, uh, you know, anti-fun, almost. Yeah. Become, uh, you know, they're this very. We're very. We were, and I, many of the young people come in very serious about things sure. that are important, sure. and and they should be. Sure. But, uh, and I tell this to Senator Schatz all the time, and he was running, I said, you know, Brian, you know, where's the food at your headquarters? <laughs> you know, I yeah. mean, like, when we, you know, back in the day, people would come together and it would be social, it would be fun, and uh, no matter how intense the discussions may be, there was always this camaraderie that took place. Sure. And, uh, and, 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 you know, when Brian got to be, and the Obamas, by the way, you know, I, I had to insist that they at least put out potato chips. So <laughs> we're not going to be like that on this convention. Well, hope, I mean. hopefully, I can, uh, hopefully I can use my background in nonprofit uh, fundraising and oh, yeah. environmental activism to sort of push a little fun, because we have fun in, okay. in those communities, and yeah. there's always good food. Well, if you're going to have volunteers, you better make it so That's that right. they enjoy themselves. That's exactly right. I will say, though, that... I think a lot of the seriousness um, in, in the folks that you would say are more ideological or maybe the newer um, blood in the Democratic right. Party probably comes from, that's a direct result of 2008 and, and the most recent downturn, the, the really what in essence was a depression. Oh, and that, the fact yeah. that wealth inequality is so pervasive now and it's at its worst since it has been since the Great Depression, right? I think, so people I are think having a harder time to get, you, get by. You're absolutely right. I think it's it's... Scandalous, and and sometime I, I'm I'm would like to to do a show about how Americans got cheated, yeah. and and uh, well, the uh, United uh, what is it uh, Citizens United yep. uh, Supreme Court decision, yep. where people can literally go out and buy an election these days, you know, yep. and uh, I I know you're very serious, you're very committed to changing some of that, so. What are your plans for doing that? I mean, how seriously, what can you do about it, somehow the influence of money in uh, politics, for, I mean, in Hawaii? Well, before we get into any, any legislative uh, agenda, before I'm really able to effectively articulate our platform or support Democrats in office, we've got to get our party back on firm financial footing. Right. And as you remember from my campaign, one of the things I, I ran on was taking a serious approach at grassroots fundraising. Um, that's not to say that our traditional funders, um, particularly labor unions and um, candidates, um, aren't welcome, or that we're going to turn that money away. Um, but as far as a long-term strategy goes, involving our grassroots to an extent to where they feel invested, they feel like they are being listened to, and you know, from a financial standpoint, economic standpoint, to spread out that burden so that our, our, our party is a little on a little firmer ground, right? It, it's a lot tougher when you get into a, a situation where you're having to go back to individual supporters to ask for large donations. Um, it's not just bad from a perception point of view, but it's also not, not it make good economic sense because the, if any of those go away, the party's at a place where... You know, one of the things that... Uh, <coughs> uh, that happened. I, I remember when I was in the uh, Constitutional Convention, we actually passed a provision mm -hmm. that limited the, the, uh, con the contrib contributions that people could make mm -hmm. uh, to an individual candidate running for office. And um, it was very popular. It was actually very well supported by the uh, lobbyists because then they didn't have to give a lot of money right, to anybody, right? right? That's right. So it, yeah. it equalized, the, you know, that got overridden. Mm -hmm. And one of the problems we have with campaign financing now is the idea that you can't limit the amount of money that goes into a campaign. So uh, we need, and I agree with you, we need to do something about it. Um, and, and it's interesting because it is pervasive and it's probably, uh, you know, it's probably perceived of as being, in Hawaii anyway, as being worse than it actually is in right. terms of ref actually influencing yeah. legislation. Yeah. But it's there. And if the public doesn't trust it, then the system doesn't work either. That's right. So it, doesn't, it doesn't surprise me. I should say it doesn't surprise me 
Um, I didn't know that your history about the constitutional aspect, but it doesn't surprise me that you're supportive of it. Um, yeah. I think a lot of longtime Democrats are very supportive of it. You know, not, neither neither group it, for this campaign, the Bernie Sanders supporters, the Hillary Clinton supporters, have a monopoly on progressive ideas. And I think you, you even have more sort of center-left um, uh, members of the party, such as President Carter yesterday, calling for publicly financed elections. Well, yeah, um, I it, think it absolutely uh, support it. I, you know, know I don't know thing. if that's on your agenda, but that's something that I think we ought to get serious about. I agree with you. 100%. You know, and that's the end game. Because that, that's in my mind. A, and at the well before that, when you get up to your convention, you got to make sure that the Democrats are, are serious enough to win the beat uh, Trump and make sure we put a Supreme Court justice on the court that will de defeat the Citizens United. Right? Absolutely. And anyway, um, so you're going up to um, Philadelphia, you, you're working to get your group together, but you're coming home. And right now they're calling uh, Hillary Clinton the presumptive nominee. Right. And, and unless something, you know, unknown happens, we are going to be uh, coming back to campaign. And it's going to be very important that Democrats come together. Yes. Sometime. Um, what are your thoughts on, on that? I mean, how does that all happen? Well, you actually pointed out to me how important convention, what, what role that plays in after we come home, right? Right. So in my mind, the most important thing we can do is represent Hawaii and our local values in a way that makes everyone in our party and our state proud. Exactly. Um, and so that when we do come home and we're talking about unity, we really mean it. And, and convention meant something. Um, for the Sanders supporters, perhaps it means changing the platform in a way that is meaningful and, as Senator Sanders is saying, is a way to, to further the revolution. Um, for Hillary Clinton supporters, that's obviously uh, having her as the presumptive nominee. Right. So when we come home, we can get down to the business of getting local Democrats elected and focus on local politics and making our local party stronger. Well, one of the things that the Democratic Party is responsible for doing is this, what we call the uh, coordinated campaign. Right. Which uh, traditionally has been funded uh, with monies from labor. Right. And uh, I'm assuming that uh, you're talking to these people and doing whatever it is. Learning as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, really, if you look at it in terms of the ticket, this is going to be one of those times, and, and it varies. You know, sometimes the fact that you are adding the top of the ticket, the, mm -hmm. the presidential nominee, helps the ticket below. In this case, I think uh, it may help Hillary as well if across the country we we bundle it right sure so because they aren't as far as i know there aren't that many spectacular races for the congressional delegation no they? doesn't seem to be right now there are some there are contested races but it doesn't seem to be um well i'll, I'll leave that to the to the voters but, but it, yeah it looks sure. like it's they are contested but right. in terms of uh yeah. Well, how, how contested? I, I, well, I you don't know. Right. Um, the Republicans seem to have slipped up, though. They're not challenging the, the Democrats in any forceful manner. Um, how do you keep alive an opposition that may be stumbling around? I, you know, I don't. Not your I obligation? do not envy them their <laughs> position. It's not my obligation. But I will say that whatever. Um, one might say about our debate, the debate that we've had, we as a party can have that debate and come out the other side of it, come out the other side of our convention, a stronger party and more united. I don't know that that's necessarily the case on the Republican side. I think that we've seen that party implode and um, have a, a very divisive and unfortunate figure placed at the top of their ticket. And we'll see how that, how that translates to down ballot races here locally. But you know, even the five members, five or so members they have in the House can't really get along. So, so. tell me, you know, if you had, like, uh, what's the, what's the, the three things that you would like to accomplish as a uh, party chairman? Uh, put the party back on firm financial footing, as okay. I've said. Um, articulate our plat platform through uh, an aggressive legislative agenda. 
um, bring respect back to the party to some extent, I think. I'm not sure that our elected officials listen much to our membership or what our membership right. is saying through the expression of the platform um, and also get Democrats elected. And is there in there somewhere, I suspect, there's an opportunity to sort of rejuvenate why we're all Democrats. Yes, I mean, you know, absolutely. I mean, get in there. And, are, are you planning to do anything that, uh, you know, back in the day, back in the day, we used to, Democratic Party used to hold, actually, uh, classes in, at, uh, at Ala Moana Park to train new immigrants to become citizens, for example. I love it. Oh, they used I to do... It. They used to hold uh, classes to train people how to be labor leaders. And so they were sort of actively involved. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is that one of the, the characteristics of the new generation is this ability to communicate, yes. but not necessarily personally. <laughs> right, it's mostly the social media stuff. Yeah, and how do you... Men, I mean, melt all of that together. Well, I've got, I've got some different ideas, one of which um, in, actually involves our labor unions and going back to what they do the best, which is not necessarily cutting checks to political parties or candidates, but is organizing yes. and building capacity at our precincts and Sometimes in our districts by organizing. Sometimes you can cut a check, you get lazy, you know. Well, and you're not showing up with manpower the way it used to be. That may be the case, but I think it, it, it is important for the labor unions, for their own membership, to be engaged in their communities, and it's great Absolutely. for the communities, for the precincts to be, you know, they're, they're well, building capacity and learning basic organizing, and I love that, about holding classes and training. Oh, that, that's, that's the reason to put the party back on firm financial And then you ground. get, you, you can use some of that energy of all these bright young people that you brought into the party. You know, I, I had uh, I, some of my major campaigns. I was always the least funded candidate and the broke guy when I ran uh, for right? like lieutenant governor, governor, yeah, we, we had no money. We couldn't, and we, I, so I know how to scrimp around. And then when I got, ran for re-election as governor, mm -hmm. I had an extremely wealthy campaign. <laughs> right. It was the most boring campaign. Everybody wanted to be a part yeah, of it. Yeah, that I have ever. Well, um, well, thank you so much thank you, for governor. being with us and to wish you well. And to uh, I hope I hope to see you rejuvenating the Democratic Party, bring back some life. Thank you so much. Thank you, great. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, and remember, Think Tech Hawaii. Um, we are here every other Monday. Talk story with John Waihei.